Welcome to another episode of Why I Didn't, the mostly useless series on why I did not pursue a certain specialty. Think of this as the opposite of So You Want to Be on the Med School Insider channel. It's a very objective, comprehensive overview of a specialty. I work with multiple experts in that field. It's free from my bias. This is the opposite. So this is entirely my bias, my experience, and why I did not choose that specialty. For some reason, you guys seem to really enjoy this series, so I'll keep making these videos. And for those who are wondering, this is medium roast dong ding, and it's an oolong. It's delicious. Mmm, chocolatey goodness. So let's start off with what I liked about cardiology, or cards is sometimes what we'll say. Let me start off by saying that if I had to choose something non-surgical as a specialty, it would almost certainly be cardiology. But why? So the first thing I liked is it was one of my favorite preclinical blocks. Now, preclinical and med school are your first two years, and that's where you are not going to the clinic or hospital as much. You're usually learning almost 95% from books, from lecture. It's just like kind of, it's kind of like college on steroids. <laughs> yeah, boy. So if you like physics and math, then cardiology is definitely gonna be a block that you enjoy. Also pulmonology. There's this beautiful, amazing physiology with the cardiac system is, it's incredible when you really dive in. And it also relies more on reasoning over memorization. And my strength is critical thinking, reasoning, less so memorization. I need to put in a lot more effort for memorization. So it came easier to me in that I was able to get better grades with lower effort in cardiology. And naturally, we all tend to gravitate towards the things that we are proficient in. We tend to enjoy them more. So it's not quite engineering, obviously, but if you enjoy that engineering way of thinking, then you're probably gonna like cardiology. And it's a very logical field. So based on input X or changing variable Y, you know what the output is gonna be. And if you're the kind of person that likes that kind of thing, it's beautiful. There's not many other specialties in medicine that give you that. So I feel like this is very telling of maybe even my childhood, but I had this book back in elementary school, not this exact one, but same book in elementary school. And it taught me a lot of things. It got me interested in engineering concepts. It taught me how an engine worked, right? This is such a cool book with all the mammoths and stuff. And um, yeah, I found this on Amazon recently. They have a newer edition, but the old, the OG with the mammoths is awesome. I feel like this kind of childhood may be one of the reasons why I gravitated so hard towards that math and science kind of stuff. Oh, and finally, ECGs are hella fun. It's like solving a puzzle. The second thing I like about cardiology is this really tight feedback loop. For many things in cardiology, the decisions you make will usually result in a very rapid change. And that's this tight feedback loop, right? Which I think is great for people who are impatient like me. Compared to other IM specialties, this is unique. You look at things like renal or hemonc, way, way, way slower. Overall, it's a very fast paced specialty. So you don't even have to wait for a radiologist. You can go get your own cardiac imaging, right? And then if, you, if your treatment does require some procedures, you can go do that treatment yourself too. So it's very self-contained. You can do the medical management, the procedural, the imaging, really cool. Number three is that it's extremely innovative. It's one of the best research fields with one of the most evidence-backed interventions. And I was thinking, why is that? I think it comes down to two things. So number one is heart disease is the number one killer of Americans. So there's a lot of importance on addressing it. That's why we put a lot of funding there. And then number two, the endpoints in cardiology research are pretty well-defined. Like an endpoint can be having a myocardial infarction, a heart attack, as an example. Whereas in a lot of other specialties, those, first of all, they don't have as much funding because it's not as high up on the list of causes of death, but then they don't have those clear cut endpoints, which oftentimes makes it much more difficult to conduct well executed randomized controlled trials. And then because of this, you have really rapid progression in terms of new medications, new devices, new innovations in the field of cardiology. Next up is impact. So as I've talked about before, enjoying your actual job is one of the most important things when it comes to deciding on a specialty. And one of the great things about cardiology is you feel really true significance to your work because you're addressing one of the leading causes of morbidity and mortality in the United States. And you can also rapidly improve a patient's quality of life. You know, I talked about how in some other specialties, having really negative outcomes weighed down on me, right? And with cardiology, sure, you may occasionally have negative outcomes, but by and large, tends to be positive and your patients tend to really like you. And even amongst your colleagues, you're gonna feel significant. You're gonna feel like your work matters. Like surgeries will not proceed if they have some cardiac concerns. They will first get the green light from you as an example. Next up is variety. And I know for myself, it's not for everyone, but for myself, variety is important. Variety is that spice of life that keeps things interesting. So cardiology provides a lot of variation, a lot of variety in terms of acute versus chronic conditions or working on the wards versus being outpatient or even imaging versus medical management versus procedures. There's also not a lot of smelly nastiness that you can get in some other specialties like GI, even though I love GI. And there's also not that much cancer. To some that's a perk, to others it's a drawback, depends on you. 
Next up is that there are lots of areas for further subspecialization. Now this is a bit in contradiction to the variety because the more you subspecialize, the less variety you are going to have in your field. However, if there are things you don't like about being a more general cardiologist, then you can narrow down and exclude those things you don't like by subspecializing further. So as an example, let's say you really enjoy the imaging aspect, you could further subspecialize with advanced cardiovascular imaging. Or if you want to do more procedures, more interventions, then you could become a interventional cardiologist. And that brings us to the next point, which is procedures. So obviously I love procedures. I think they're so, so fun. And you're not quite a surgeon, obviously, but you're using, you're doing much more procedures compared to the average non-surgical specialty. You are using both your brain and your hands. And I feel like sometimes when you go into surgery, you feel like you're relying a little bit too much on the hands, not enough on the brain. So this is a nice way to balance the two. The other thing here about procedures, when you're younger, right? So I used to think I would be a microsurgical plastic surgeon, meaning do the really complex reconstructions that take like 12, 15, sometimes even over a day, right? Really long cases. But when you get older, you don't have the same endurance, right? So I, I, don't, I haven't gotten to that point yet. I'm in my early 30s, but if you're 40, 50 and on, you may not really enjoy those long procedures. CARDS has really quick procedures, good outcomes, satisfying, bam, straight to the point. You know, you save someone's life from a STEMI, from a heart attack, instant gratification. And last is compensation. You get paid pretty well as a cardiologist. I believe it's the number one top non-surgical specialty in terms of compensation. And it's definitely the number one in terms of internal medicine subspecialties. All right, next up, what did I not like about CARDS? Why did I not choose cardiology? So first up is the long training path. Oh my God. So you got after med school, three years of internal medicine residency, then three years of cardiology fellowship. Now, if you want to subspecialize further, like the, let's say, interventional cardiology, as an example, you have to do additional training after that. So you're spending at minimum six years, but sometimes seven, eight, or even nine. And the thing is, I was one of those students on my IM rotation that, let's just say, was not the biggest fan of rounding. It did not feel, it felt like something I just, it felt like a chore, something that I had to get done going through the motions. It wasn't as fun or rewarding. So then having to do three years of internal medicine, which isn't all just rounding, isn't all just inpatient, that's a big part of it. Hell no. Hell no. 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 I refuse. No. No. Number two is that it's not procedural enough for me. Like it is very highly procedural and I've seen some interventional cardiology cases, super badass, super cool. But I didn't get that same rush and excitement that I would get from watching a cool neurosurgery or orthopedic surgery or plastic surgery case instead. Okay, and last up is the egos. So the two specialties that stereotypically have the biggest egos would be neurosurgery and cardiology. And again, this is just my experience, but I'll say, especially in academic cardiology, the egos were a little bit more off-putting, whereas I found with the neurosurgeons, did they have egos? Yes, but it was like, they kind of rocked it in a funny, humorous, not all that serious kind of way. Ultimately, this wasn't really an important factor because the people you work with are going to be different depending on which location, which region you're working in. So not really a big deal, but it does color your perception of a specialty. So overall, cardiology is a pretty badass specialty. And it's not surprising to me, given all the pros, very few cons, in my opinion, that it is the most competitive fellowship after an internal medicine residency. Now, as for why I didn't go into it, when you're choosing a specialty, usually the first thing you ask yourself is, do you want to be surgical or non-surgical? If you love the OR, you know you're going surgical. And if you don't, then don't do it, go non-surgical. So I was one of those people that just fell in love with the OR. Time flew, I got into flow at a very high rate. And that's pretty much the main reason why I didn't even consider a cardiology. Because other than that, almost everything else was super spot on in my opinion. All right guys, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something, found it interesting or insightful. If you have any other requests for why I didn't, let me know with a comment down below. Much love, and I'll see you guys in that next one. Oh my God, this tea is so good.